Hi guys. It is now the close of a spectacularly gorgeous day. Over the top, beautiful day here in the silent paradise, not counting the screaming fucking rugrats next door of the Adirondack Mountains here on this chilly <coughs> Friday. <coughs> now, sunset Friday. August 10th, 2018. So it being Friday, I just remembered I have over, I have overlooked my duties as a doomsday uh, chronicler. So better late than never. Going to finally get around to bringing you this week's edition of my ecological meltdown roundup rant, where I simply go on the pages of my email is open up my email box for the latest latest evidence that this planet is heading directly into a just 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 into hell uh here in the summer of 2018 and since i've been paywalled out of the washington post i'm just going to start making this rant a one part rant again and we're going to start out like i always do over there on the pages of mangabay.com mangabay.com to see what's on the mind of Rhett Butler and the boys this week and we're going to start our trip around a collapsing planet to somewhere I have seen with my own eyes and that is the oil palm plantations of Ecuador we're going to start in the shithole country of Ecuador, which is, let's see, uh, Ecuador is Latin America's second largest producer of oil palm. I think Colombia might be the first, and the world's sixth largest. And uh, anyway, we do have what looks like some good news that some deadly disease is hitting the monoculture oil palm plantations. So take a wild guess what they're doing, what, what anyone would do uh, if your monoculture gets a deadly disease. How about just moving in to, what is it, I think about the 3% of uh, rainforest that is left in Ecuador. Just move your new monocultures there if you're old monoculture. Meanwhile, conservationists are racing to protect rainforest as oil palm plantations expand in other parts of Ecuador. Other parts of Ecuador and everywhere else. I'm surprised they're not planting this shit in Florida by now. Anyway, let's see. Uh, I'm going to skip over it. You know, the bullshit. I don't even have time for it. Here we go. But this one, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. I said I wasn't going to be reading bullshit, but I can't resist it. Madagascar proposed poses paying illegal loggers illegal loggers to audit or buy their rosewood huh yes <laughs> oh how about a radical solution to illegal logging paying loggers for access to their illicit stockpiles or even buying back the wood back from them directly. There you go. You know, I know uh, if, if, if I want to crack down on illegal deforestation in my country, the, the best solution to, to convincing illegal loggers to get out of business is to buy their wood, their illegal wood from them. Don't throw them in jail. Just pay them for their illegal wood. That'll teach them a lesson. 
Okay, from the shithole country of Madagascar. Uh, let's see, let's go back. No, we're going to skip over that story from uh, Ecuador. Let's go to, I don't know, is this the sh shithole country of China or New Guinea? You tell me. High risk that China's timber from Papua New Guinea is illegal. No shit, Sherlock. Wow. China, as the main destination for New Guinea's timber, could help shore up illegality in the country's forest sector with stricter enforcement. Huh. The report contends that logging companies operating in Papua New Guinea continue to harvest timber unsustainable unsustainable unsustainably often in violation of the laws of a country that is 70% forest. No shit, Sherlock. Global witness calls for a moratorium on logging and also argues that Chinese companies should increase their own due diligence to avoid purchasing illegal timber. Yes. Okay, let's go back to the shithole country of Ecuador where we see a pipeline cutting a trail of misery through indigenous land. Hmm. Who would have thought? The construction of an oil pipeline without the necessary permits has led to the destruction of the ancestral forest of the Siona indigenous community. Huh. Do you think so? The project has had far-reaching effects on the community's long-held cultural traditions and practices. Uh-huh. Yes. Never would have thought of that. Wow. From that sky is blue story, well, take a wild guess which button we're picking up here. I know you've never considered this, guys, but I read it here in Manga Bay, so it's got to be true. Industrial fishing fleets traveling farther to reel in fewer fish. No shit, Sherlock. According to a recent study in the journal Science Advances, the average distance industrial fishing fleets travel from their home ports to fishing grounds is twice what it was in the 1950s, expanding the total area of the world's oceans that are now being fished from 60 to 90 percent. But you would never guess this. Despite ranging farther afield, and fishing in new waters, the fleets of the top 20 fishing countries, collectively responsible for 80% of the global industrial fishing catch, are hauling in far smaller amounts of fish. No shit, Sherlock. Wow, I wonder why that could be. Hmm. All right, let's go over to the shithole paradise of Bali, Indonesia. On an island in the sun, coal power is king over abundant solar. No shit, Sherlock. Locals and environmentalists have opposed a plan to expand a coal-fired power plant in northern Bali, Indonesia. They are worried that the expansion will exacerbate the existing impact of the plant on the environment 
and locals' health and livelihoods. A particular concern focuses on the survival of dolphins and other endemic species living in close proximity to the plant. Yes, with Greenpeace saying dolphins have particularly been affected since the plant came on long and came online in 2015. Wow, another major worry is air pollution. Do you think so? Okay. All right. Let's go over to the shithole country of Laos. The shithole country of Laos. Heavy rains preceded the Laos Dam collapse. No shit, Sherlock. Was climate change a factor? Huh. Some observers have blamed the collapse of a dam in southern Laos last month, which killed dozens of people and displaced many more on faulty construction. Hmm. The companies that built building the dam are blaming the monsoon rains. And the question remains, to what extent was the heavier than usual rainfall that pushed the dam past its breaking point a result of climate change? That is the question. Uh, let's see, what shithole country do we want to go to next? Uh, I guess our own shithole country where we see beavers matter more than you think. Hmm. <laughs> Did you know that the, the lowly beaver is one of the world's most overlooked keystone species? Yes. Uh, today, the North American beaver population is on the rebound. Thank you very much. Uh, until those goddamn wildlife services get through with killing them. Okay. Um, let's see. Soggier forest soils thwart the uptake of climate warming methane. A recent investigation has revealed that the ability of forest soils to absorb methane has declined over time, likely due to an increase in precipitation as a result of climate change. The new study found that methane uptake declined by as much as 89% and that the phenomenon is now taking place around the world. Huh. Do you think so? All right. Uh, I'm just having to skip. All right, let's go down there to the shithole country of Brazil, to the Cerrado. The Cerrado which according to many studies is more biodiverse than the Amazon rainforest. More companies sign on to the Cerrado Manifesto. Come on now, that ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. All right. The Cerrado Manifesto calls for an end to deforestation in Brazil's Cerrado biome. Uh, yes. According to experts, about half of the area's native forest and vegetation have already been cleared for agricultural expansion. Hmm. While more than 70 companies have signed the Cerrado Manifesto, including large fast food companies and supermarkets like McDonald's and Walmarts. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. 
experts say the initiative will not likely be successful without participation by large commodities firms. Alright, let me get out both the uh, buttons. No shit, Sherlock. No shit. Yes. Alright, let's see. Some uh, article on ecotourism. I gotta figure out which button to pick up. I never know with Manga Bay. One week they'll be talking about how ecotourism is going to save the planet. And then the next week they're talking about how ecotourism is going to kill the planet. No shit, Sherlock. Yes. Okay, so what is it this... Uh, this is kind of middle of the road. Huh. Locals interviewed for this story expressed a general satisfaction with the economic stability that ecotourism revenue has brought. This is somewhere over in Indonesia. However, as its popularity as a destination grows, there are now concerns that the community's traditions and way of life could be sacrificed in the process. No shit, Sherlock. Okay. I, I know once again you would never have thought of this without Manga Bay telling you. So let's hear it now. Ocean acidity stifles coral anchored communities. Researchers working in the seas around Japan found that higher levels of carbon dioxide diminish the diversity of corals and other life farms. Life forms. Their findings indicate that rising ocean acidity could inhibit coral growth and reduce the number of species living in these ecosystems. No shit, Sherlock. Okay, back to the shithole country of Indonesia, where we see Indonesia demands cleanup after coal spill pollutes beach. A coal barge spilled 7,000 tons of the fossil fuel just off a beach in northern Sumatra on July 30th. Huh. The coal was destined for a nearby cement plant run by a subsidiary of Swiss giant Lafarge, but now it blankets a popular beach. Hmm. Local fishermen say the coal has damaged coral and killed marine life while devastating the livelihoods of the local community. Government authorities have called on the cement firm and barge operator to clean up their coal. Oh, come on now. That ain't even bullshit. That's bullshit. All right. Back to the shithole country of Brazil. Let's see. Look at Amazon forest degradation. You notice that not one of these stories that I'm reading has appeared in the mainstream media this week. Well, actually, I have not tuned in to the mainstream media news this week, so maybe that's not true. Anyway, back to the Amazon jungle. Fire. More than logging now drives Amazon forest degradation study finds. Huh. A recent study, um, blah, 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 looking at loss of carbon due to forest degradation in areas exposed to logging, fire damage, or both 
in the southeast Amazon, the study revealed that fire damage causes greater losses than direct logging. There you go. Uh, if the chainsaws don't get you, the fires will. Okay, here's one that we have mentioned before. <clears throat> Largest king colony, largest king penguin colony in the world has shrunk by 90%. No shit, Sherlock. Yes. The reasons for this decline are still unknown, but the researchers hope that further field studies will be able to verify the massive drop and identify the factors that led to it. I've already had this rant. If you want to identify the factors that have led to the collapse of the biggest penguin colony on the planet, I suggest looking in the mirror. There are 7.6 billion factors why the king penguins and the songbirds and the Adirondacks and every other goddamn bird on this on this shithole planet have collapsed by 90%. All right, back to the shithole country of Ecuador. Hmm. Chevron must pay for environmental damage in Ecuador. Court rules. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. Yes. The Constitutional Court of Ecuador has ordered Chevron to pay nine and a half billion dollars in compensation for environmental damage. That was bullshit. Yes, and Chevron can no longer make appeals in the 25-year-old case. Bullshit detected. Take precautions. Okay, what is our more than previously thought story of the week from Manga Bay. Tropical forest canopies get hotter than expected, putting wildlife at risk. Hmm. A new study finds tropical forest canopies in Panama exceeding the maximum air temperature by as much as 7 degrees Celsius. Uh, the authors write that this could have dire implications not only for the trees themselves, but also for the plants and animals that spend their lives in the treetops. Hmm. The study's results also indicate trees' ability to sequester carbon drops off as their canopies heat up, which could reduce their ability to help fight climate change. No shit, Sherlock. All right. This is, I would like to talk about this story, uh, but it's, it's, it's too much to go into, but I, this is a, a commentary, uh, but I do like the bottom line. <clears throat> Nature has been turned into an economic asset, and in many instances, nature's usefulness for humans has become the only value that we can bring to light for the common clueless fucking moron. No shit, Sherlock. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, what's going on with the planet's fungi this week? Nitrogen pollution is choking forests, carbon-protecting fungi. Forests exposed to high nitrogen pollution 
in the U.S. are associated with low abundance of carbon-protecting fungi, a new study has found. Uh, the loss of these fungi means that a lot of soil carbon is likely being released back into the atmosphere as carbon dioxide accelerating climate change. Oh, shit, Sherlock. All right, back to the shithole country of Indonesia, where we see Indonesia adds hundreds of birds to its protected species list. Yes. Bringing it to a total of 919 endemic species. Most of them birds are now banned from trading and hunting in one of the most biodiverse countries on Earth. Yes. With the new list, conservation activists expect people to hand over captive species that are now protected under the law. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. But let's see, is this a, we're going to connect some dots between the shithole country of the U.S., the shithole country of China, and the shithole continent in Africa. We're going to wrap up Manga Bay with all of this dot connecting. Study links... U.S. demand for Chinese furniture to deforestation in Africa. No shit, Sherlock. Recent research links the U.S. demand for furniture made in China to tree cover loss in Africa's Congo Basin. Hmm, never would have thought of this. Between 2001 and 2015, China became the largest export market for timber from the Congo Basin. And over that same time period, the share of imports of furniture from China to the U.S. grew from 30% to 50%. Hmm. The researchers suggest that public awareness campaigns aimed at curbing the demand for such furniture could be a boon for the Congo Basin's forests. That was bullshit. Okay, and in the fading light, where since I'm fire paywalled out of the Washington Post, we're just going to flip over to Center for Biological Diversity's Endangered Earth, where no shit Sherlock never would have thought of this either. Trump targets California and the Arctic for more drilling and fracking. No shit, Sherlock. This week, the Trump administration pushed ahead plans to open more than a million acres of public lands in central California to oil drilling and fracking. The move would end a five-year moratorium on leasing federal public lands in the state to oil companies. Meanwhile, also this week, Trump took a major step toward opening Alaska's National Petroleum Reserve, the largest roadless area in the United States, to new industrial-scale oil development. The project threatens polar bears, caribou, and migratory birds in the ecologically rich reserve. No shit, Sherlock. Quoting the center's Claire Lakewood, quote, we desperately need to keep these dirty fossil fuels in the ground, but Trump is hell-bent on sacrificing our health, wildlife, and climate to profit big 
polluters. No shit, Sherlock. Okay. Tell Ryan Zinke hands off the Endangered Species Act. <clears throat> Ryan Zinke. Ryan Zinke. Ryan. Ryan, listen to me, goddammit. I'm talking to you, Ryan. Keep your fucking hands off the Endangered Species Act. Okay. I have done my bit to save the planet. Next. All right. All right. Uh, let's go over to the shithole country of South Africa, connecting dots between Donald Trump and South Africa. <clears throat> the lion bone trade. As if Trump letting trophy hunters import dead lions were not stomach-turning enough, there's something else just as disturbing going on behind the scenes. South Africa has 200-plus lion farms that raise the big cats to be shot by gun-toting, clueless-fucking-moron tourist. The lion's heads and skins become hunter's trophies while their skeletons are legally exported to Asia where the bones are ground down to be used as medicine or as a wine component. Is that a bear? Is it a bear? <coughs> no. Sancho? Lions and tigers and bears. And uh, right after that, the story about lions, we have Brews for Bears, a nationwide call to halt the grizzly hunt. Hmm. Yes. Brews, B-R-E-W-S, meaning drink more beer to save the bears. Uh... Anyway, guys, I think I already mentioned this one last week. Suit launched over pesticides in national wildlife refuges. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service abruptly reversed its ban on the use of bee-killing neonicotinoid pestinoids in, gener in genetically modified pesticide-resistant crops on national wildlife refugees. No shit, Sherlock. I've already been over this. Quoting the Senator's Hannah Connor, quote, it is shameful that the Trump administration is promoting greater use of highly toxic agricultural pesticides on wildlife refuges. These special places were set aside to protect America's wildlife not to protect agriculture practices that rely on dangerous pesticides known to harm animals. And from that story, we've already mentioned this one. EPA wants less fuel-efficient cars. That should be fewer fuel-efficient cars, more tailpipe pollution. The feds have proposed to freeze fuel efficiency and greenhouse gas standards for passenger vehicles, blah, blah, blah. Uh, right, this is the center's Vera Pardee. This is one of the Trump administration's deadliest plans yet. It would lock us into decades of toxic planet-warming emissions from new gas guzzlers on our roads. No shit, Sherlock. Let's go to, we're just going to wind it up here. We're going to wind it up in the shithole state of Nevada. Trump to lease 54,000 acres of Nevada's Ruby Mountains. No <clears throat> shit, Sherlock. The Trump administration plans to lease 54,000 acres of our public lands in Nevada's Ruby Mountains that are under consideration 
for oil and gas development. Do you think so? Quoting the Center's Patrick Donnelly to wind up this rant, Donald Trump is poised to destroy one of Nevada's most spectacular places for the fossil fuel industry. No shit, Sherlock. And with that, I have got to wrap up this week's ecological meltdown roundup rant. Get my little dog locked in the back of my gas sucking truck and uh, start my exciting Friday night alone in the wilderness. Smoke them if you got them. And you know why. We are so fucked. Bye, guys. Yes, little dog. Are the bears coming for us to kill us all?